Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to potatoes for dinner. Yeah, uh, dinner today. As as I, as I've explained, hopefully a few times in the recent streams, time slots being a bit weird at the moment. Uh, I was up till eight a.m. yesterday. Actually, eight thirty, closer to nine. Um, and I could have got up after just three hours of sleep and streamed like a zombie for you. Or, or, we could have had dinner together and we could do it in a different time slot and see how we do. So anyway, I hope you guys are all good. Hopefully I'm not, you know, doing it in, on top of ESL or something as I often get accused of every time I end up changing the time. But uh, today, as the title says, we're going to be doing some more Zero to Hero. I'm actually really excited about digging my teeth into Zero to Hero. There's something about the leveling experience in GW2 that just, ah, it grabs me and I really, really like it. But it's always two steps from perfection. Or quite a few steps from perfection. Uh, anyway, it's, it's under my skin right now. I do want to get in there. I do want to at least do my daily on that guy. It's very important, I think, for the Zero to Hero that we do our daily every day because that's very efficient um, uh, XP growth. Let's, let's turn the volumes down a little here. The effects volume seems very high. Because uh, it's very, very efficient XP growth. Um, so we are going to at least be doing that. But also... Uh, we have a guild challenge to do, so if anybody in chat or anybody in the guild in-game, I appreciate we're, we're only just getting rolling right now. If anybody wants to play, um, uh, send me a message in-game. I'll send you an invite to the, the guild and we will do the challenge. The challenge this week being... Do, 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 wait for it. Do, 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 do. Alright, we got 30 minutes to do Deep Trouble. Alright, Deep Trouble's not so bad, but I really don't know very much about organising it. So someone said, is there an empty slot in the club? There is. Um, ah, this is not the time or place to describe it because not enough people are going to hear this. But uh, spuds might start getting kicked soon, guys. Because if you have a look at the way we're, we're, we've got the guild set up. If you look at that, it's quite impressive. It's quite crazy, actually. All right, you've got my free-to-play account, which hasn't logged in for three months. That's the oldest account in the entire, in the entire guild, right? Is that. I When I originally took control of Spud Club a couple of weeks back, I uh, there were about... Six or seven people who were in it from originally when it would have been created by someone else and it had been like uh, just used by them as a stream thing and I was completely hands off. And I, I thought to myself, all right, look, there's like these guys here and they were really the most dedicated. They wanted the guild the most. They were in the streams. They, they were like the top guys. So I gave them all really good ranks and I gave them all like basically leeway in my eyes to stay in the guild forever. But it just got to the point where they hadn't logged on for months and months and months and months. About as old as my free-to-play account. And uh, so many people wanted to join, I just couldn't justify it anymore. Because if you look, basically what I've agreed to do is kick Sprouts. Tirak has specifically asked me not for a kick, and I, I, I'm, I'm recognizing that. Jeb, Jebro as well, I haven't kicked. I could possibly kick him. He seems like a very inactive player, to be honest. But, well, we'll see. Um, wait, if that is actually Jebro, I think that is Jebro. Anyway. But everyone else is a spud, you see. Well, this guy, actually. Uh, until very quickly, you see, four days. A four-day sprout. So I'm, like, kicking people. And if I kick him, it, it got to, like, two days. I was like, wow, I'm kicking people who have been inactive for two days. That's pretty bad. So I ended up kicking all those original guys. And it's just getting to the point where I kind of, you know, I'm looking now. i got my eyes, all right, on, like, Min here. Now, Min may have, de have de donated to the guild, but hasn't logged in for a fortnight. And I get, like, upwards of 15 requests every day of people trying to join the guild. All right? That's no joke. And Min still gets... So, I don't know. We may have to add a cutoff point for the spuds, too. Um, and I don't know what that's going to be, but yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I'm going to make a squad. You guys want to join on my squad? I'm going to get rid of Wax's squad thing up on the uh, UI there. There you go. God, I'm getting good at this old... OBS Malaki. Louis how knowledgeable would you say you are about general Final Fantasy lore that continues on from one Final Fantasy universe to the next? Um, you mean like, uh, like, I see, I wouldn't call it lore. I would call it ha their hallmarks of, of their franchise. So, Chocobo, I, I guess this is what you mean, recurring stuff, right? Like, so Chocobos, Cactuars, uh, you know, accessories like Soul of Tomasa, specific classes like Black Mage and White Mage. Uh, specific mechanics that recur, you know, there's a lot of recurring stuff. How knowledgeable would I say I'm about that? I, I, I'm not like some super genius with it. I know the more obvious stuff. Um, my history in the franchise is this. Finished one and loved one when I played it. I got super hooked on one. 
I, I didn't play it when it originally came out, don't get me wrong, I wasn't even alive when it originally came out. But uh, I played it like, um, I think I played the Game Boy version of it. Oh no, 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 they did the PlayStation 1 re-release and that's what I played of it. And I actually have it on my phone as well, but I've never played it. Um, on, on the phone. So, one, I really, really enjoyed. Two, I played a tiny weeny little bit of. Three, I've never played because it was never really available in our region anyway. Uh, so, look, we want to meet up at Mount Maelstrom, guys. So, squad up, Mount Maelstrom up. Let's do it. We're going to go to Oxbow Isle. Uh, four, I did play on the DS. I played four on the DS and I played loads of it. But four did, like, one of those really cheeky Final Fantasy X-2 style things. Is that Oxbow Isle? Or it's Irwin Isle. It might be Irwin Isle. Four did one of those really cheeky 10-2 style things where you would like equip characters with spells and eventually, without you knowing if it's your first time playing through the game, those characters might die or disappear or leave your party or turn to stone and all, all these different kind of things like characters would leave you, right? Then right at the end of the game, you could often get a lot of those characters back. And it just so happened that if you equipped the right spell to those characters, when you got them back, they would have a like advance those spells into like new super spells and new different things like that and like cool new items and things and i'd missed like so much stuff i tried my hardest to do like 100 percent and like uh, so i got right near the end of four but then upon finding all that information out um it really turned me off the game like really turned me off the game so i never finished it never played five or six six i've heard a lot about though and six i think i'd very much enjoy uh, and then I played seven. I played eight. Oh, well, I completed seven. I completed eight. I never played nine. I completed ten. I completed twelve. I completed thirteen. So I would say I've played the majority of the games in the franchise. Not I, neither of the MMOs, though. And some of the early ones, as you can see, I, I missed. All right. Oh, my God. I forgot to join a squad. What the hell? Why do I have a memory of making a squad? All right. All right. All right. Join on. Join on, guys. Spud Club. Let's do it. Let's do it. Guild challenge. I, I don't know how many people we're going to get. So, like, really, I'm, I'm sort of imploring you guys so that we can get to zero to hero. To get as many of us as possible. You basically have no leader for this as well. I know the way that it's supposed to work is everybody spreads out into little packets and you all escort the little quagging and stuff. I'm just going to say let's YOLO it and let's just hope people are smart enough to know what the, what the balls is going on. All right. But currently we only have, you know, six people across two regions. WP, what do you think about Blade and Soul? I don't think about Blade and Soul. People people have been messaging me about it a lot recently, and I just don't think about it. Uh, yes, my voice is going as well, yes. Um, uh, I did, uh, I did, I've recorded a lot lately, guys, like a lot. I did about five to six hours of uh, FF10-2. Then I did uh, an hour and a half long pod with Matt. Then I did... Um, a three hour, almost three hour, or well, uh, two and a half hour, um, record session with Matt yesterday on something that's going to go up on Concrete Ducks. And that's on top of the regular Guild Wars 2 videos that have gone up at the same time. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's been quite a, oh, and, 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 and the stream, obviously the tournament stream yesterday, which was another four hours. A lot of it's been recording. A lot of recording. Yeah, F why would you be ashamed to like FF7? FF7 is like the most hype, overhyped, loved game of the entire franchise in the West. No one would be ashamed of liking 7. Yeah, when we get lieutenants, I can just make someone a lieutenant and that'll be it. <clears throat> oh, oh, I'm on EU. Yeah, that's true. Alright, well, we've got mostly EU people here. Let's just keep going, we'll see. So yeah, if, if someone wants to tag up NA side, then do that, yeah. Oh my god, we could have one squad across both regions with a lieutenant for each. How crazy is that? What's going on with these males? Are they people we want to join? I donated 49 piles of crystalline dust to help you upgrade. Ecto, may I be upgraded? Okay, if not, here's 10 guard. Wow, okay, cool, Red Belly. Yeah, when you are uh, uh, treasury, it's kind of hard as me elite for, as a leader to tell what you do. That's really awesome. Thank you so much for all the, for the, all the support of the guild. That's really, really cool. Really badass of you. We don't have 3k Ethereum yet, which is good. I'm trying not to take any donations from people. It's funny, actually. When I start streaming, it feels like more are coming in. There you go. You can get spotted up. Hey, fan of you. That's not a guild request. Some gold to become a spud. Nero. Lopan? Okay. Hold on, guys. Just while people come. So, again, uh, for new people who just tuned in, 
Uh, we've doubled our viewership since I last explained. We are doing a guild mission, and there is an open invite to everyone. Can we? It's the challenge. If you've not done it yet this week, you might not realise it's Heart of Thorns. Actually, there's pretty decent uh, loot for you all uh, from doing this because of the resonating slivers. So I would, I would definitely recommend uh, trying it out if you want to. And then the quicker we do that, wow, that guy donated 20g. That was badass. Alright, and then the Tony next week. Okay, that's clearly not got anything to do with anything else. Oh my god. We got another one. Okay, Dandy says I need an invite. I actually, uh, for what it's worth, guys, I don't mind if you don't play every day. Hell, not even I play every day. I mean, really? Oh, maximum limit, of course. Uh, the, the thing is, like, um, I, it, it's just, I just want to let you know, you know, like, it, it's scary stuff. Like, if, you, if you're a spot, if you're a sprout, like, right now, it's pretty unforgiving just because of the... The, f the amount of people we've got coming. That's all I'm trying to say. No, look, 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 these, a lot of these names I recognise. I was playing with just the other day. It's like, oh, they haven't logged in since the last Zero to Hero stream. Kick. It's like what? I really like eight too. I think I prefer eight to seven. Eight doesn't hold up so well to the test of time than seven. Don't get me wrong, but it's still pretty good. Uh, and specifically, I like triple triad and. The, the slam systems in the late that are just stupid. They they basically is just grind and you trivialize the entire game. Like the whole refining mechanic, it can be pretty dumb. But still, I like the story on it and I like the scope of it. Uh, let's get a few more. We can't. How many will we need to do this challenge? What do you guys in chat think? What do you guys think? Also, I hope you're having a good day. I uh, I just had like the most amazing dinner. I had green beans, minced meat, and cheese. It was amazing. That may sound horrible, but it's really, really good. It's like it's kind of like an alternative to spaghetti bolognese. It's great. It's just you know not the spaghetti or the bolognese sauce, <laughs> but it's it's very similar. I'll send you a message for an invite. We should make a second Spud Club. No way. Do you know how? I, I, honestly, I I got for the first three weeks. It hasn't happened this week. This is the first week it hasn't. For the first three weeks. I was capped on gold income on my account, all right? That limit is 500G. That means there is at least 1,500 gold dedicated purely onto this guild. The other day, I spent about 100 gold on a single blue cushion, all right? And that wasn't even out of, that wasn't even out of donations. I should be very clear about that. I'm not, I'm not spending donation money fl flippantly. That's just basically going on upgrades. Out of my own personal money, 200G that I'd earned from a ghostly infusion that I got in a raid drop. I, uh, I, I spent on decorations the other day, and basically most of it went on a blue cushion. And a couple of other little things. Talia the Scribe could talk more, more about that. But yeah. How crazy is that? But yeah, I don't know why so many people are talking about Blade and Soul suddenly. It's like, what? Blade and Soul? What? What? This is super come out of the woodworks for me. Look, guys, it's another giant MMO. You know, like, I struggle with this game. I play this game, like, more than any other game, and... I struggle to feel like I truly have a grip of understanding on it. I struggle to have confidence that I can truly talk about PvP balance while also talking about raid balance or any of this. Like, it's such a huge game. I cannot, and I know for a fact, any other MMO is going to be like that. Right? Any other MMO is going to be like that. It's insane. It is insane. So, like, that puts me off of the idea of, of Blade and Soul. Um... But all that said, I am, uh, for, for what it's worth, you know, I know there's, there's a sizable chunk of people who... who would like to follow me through other games and stuff. And um, for what it's worth, I am very excited about the day that X2 is done and the new Tomb Raider is done. And kind of, I'm out of that territory where I'm basically playing games to fulfill promises. Because they're fun as well at the same time. But, you know, like, there's that thing. There's, uh, I'm like, look, I promised people I'd do this. This is the plan. This is what we're going to do. But, you know, these could be like year, month and month, month long plans, right? And it's going to be nice that moment I get out of the other side of Tomb Raider and I'll, be, I'll, I'll, I'll have true freedom. With no plans, nothing owed to people for the first time in, like, two years, right? Because, like, it, you know, it basically all started at the start of Final Fantasy X. Or, or before that, actually, the, uh, the Azuric play. Oh, anyway, people want, well, people want guild invites, alright? You can have a guild invite. You don't need to rep. It's very hands-off. But, like, look at all these spuds I just scrolled past, right? In favour of kicking, like, someone like this. There you go. I also did a 
kind of a weird video today that I, I'm not sure how comfortable I am putting it up. It's basically just a self-promotional video. It's a video where I say to people, hey, check out all the streams are on are, are on the channel. I set up all Wooden Potatoes 2. You can sub to it if you like, blah, 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 blah. Stuff's coming out on Concrete Ducks, etc. And, uh, and I just feel weird about it. It's only five minutes, right? Like, it's a tiny little video. It's not much of people's time. I put a bit of a joke in there. There's some nice music. There's gameplay. It's fine. As long as it goes out paired with another GWT video, it's okay. But it feels so, like, slimy. It's like... It's like, oh, guys, did you know that you can get more Wooden Potatoes content? All you have to do is sub, sub, sub. Like other videos. Like, it's, it, it, I feel like I'm in that territory. And that's always been something I've, I've felt odd about. Shiny Torchic. Why don't you just message me, Shiny Torchic, so I can right-click you and invite you that way. That'd be pretty good, too. Speaking of Shiny Torchics, I've been playing a lot of Ores. Actually, Blade and Soul have a channel system where you can move yourself to different instances of the map. Okay, that's cool, but, you know, that's not going to make me buy the MMO. Or, or if it's free to play. I mean, free to play to me is still a red red light. It really is. Especially, like, is Blade and Soul an Asian MMO? It's just a red light to me. I am desperate to play and experience a, a, a new fantasy world, though, and get lost and explore. I really am quite desperate for that. I have a serious itch me for that. Yeah, it's like, I, oh, you're a sellout. You're selling out on your own content. All right, we've got 10 people. Come on, we need more. We need more than 10 people. NA is smiling as well. Less than a, less than a tenth of people watching right now want to come. It would seem. WP, you play Ellie. You play an Ellie like me, so I'm interested in hearing your opinion on this. How do you feel about Guild Wars 1 versus Guild Wars 2 in terms of the Magitek universe? Um, It's probably nostalgia. Uh, but I liked the consistency of the Guild Wars 1 universe. And it's very... Um, it was. A, it had a very narrow focus in its uh, in, in in its universe. It, it was like very, you know, like very. I wouldn't know what periods to describe it as, but right, like it. It felt. I don't know. I there's stuff about Guild Wars Two. It's hard to articulate articulate my thoughts on this topic. There's stuff about Guild Wars Two that I think could have been really amazing. You guys, uh, the stream doesn't exist anymore, sadly. Uh, if you guys were still watching back when we were playing our Necromancer and our Guardian completing the entire game without dying and all that stuff. Uh, I was doing some missions with the Vigil towards the end of the personal story. Now these are missions where you basically drive a tank column up through Central Ore. At, you know, as a part of the Pact Assault on Zaitan. And a story like that, a moment like that, something for the, the world builders to have constructed, a, a, a story beat to have been conceived... That is a fantastic thing. They really did something incredible. I think that's a place where the Magitek and, you know, the technology and stuff really comes in... Could have been a, a, amazing, right? Like, if they really well contrasted the tanks and the pact and the new world and the new age and this, these machines of war powering their way through this ancient, magical, mystical land that was once below the sea and has been raised up and has all these layers of history and where the gods once walked and that was infused with magic in the very rings that built its architecture and you've got these badass tanks here destroying hordes of undead. That is a really cool concept. But, um... It's very, very hard with Guild Wars 2 because I see that the concept's good, but their execution of it was so poor. You see what that mission is and you, you don't feel what you should feel, what you could feel, what the, what the devs could have really driven home. Because the, the, the story just had so little work put on it compared to the rest of the systems of the game. You know, which is understandable to a great degree because it's an MMO, but... So then you ask me, how good's the Magitek in this game? And it's like, alright, well, they broadened the focus of this of this franchise, of this universe. They put 250 years on the timeline, and they put 500 years on the technology, right? Whether it matches up to the real world or not, you know, your expectations for a fantasy universe, I'd say, you know, they, they put more than you would have expected. So, they did that. They made the decision. They could have run with the ball, but because they didn't, it's hard to assess whether it was a good call. Do you know what I mean? When I think of Guild Wars 1, I think of a very specific, you know... Very different kind of world, not a world where where the Black Citadel exists. And you know that's obvious. It was a, it was a deliberate decision. All right, we've now got eleven people. Is ten people enough for NA? Listen, guys, I'll I'll chat with you for five more minutes. Then we'll do the the challenge. If anybody wants in the guild, send me a whisper. Someone said I'm a daily necro player. I will flip out if you invite me. All right, let's let's make someone flip out, shall we, guys? Ding, 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 ding. 
Do you think the execution falls short in writing or in development? Oh, good question. I think the two have impacted each other for, to make that, uh, uh, you know, something you can comfortably answer as one or the other. You know, I, I think writing was so often constrained by the development and has to be done in tandem so closely to the development of the game that, uh, you know, where restrictions come on one department, they, they hit the other hard. Um... I think, uh, you know, high-level design, who, whoever was responsible for it at the inception of the game, what Jeff and Ree did. I, don't, I mean, it's, it's one of those really odd things to me that those two are so quiet now. Like, it's really crazy. I, you know, I, I, I'm not much of a conspiracy theorist guy. You know, I tend to think that things are quite simple. It's just people at a company, etc., etc., etc. But to indulge ourselves for a second, it's kind of fun to think that, you know, like, they built a good world. They were hampered by the design, you know, ArenaNet were much more interested in building their dynamic event system, right? And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, right? That's what defines their franchise. You you can't easily say that it was a mistake to focus on something like dynamic events, right? Some revolutionary thing you've not seen in MMO before. They created a product that was so different to any prior product they'd ever come out with. Obviously, there was a lot of focus everywhere else. They chose to prioritize that focus instead of this world that the, you know, the world builders were looking at at launch. And then they mysteriously go very quiet now. And they suppose still work there but we never hear from them are they really just in the background you know just because they want other people to take up the mantle or did they get really pissed off about how bad their story was executed in the end you know like uh, here's the thing guys ideas are easy um inspiration is easy uh don't let anyone tell you that you have to be an artist to be inspired or you have to be smart or you need a talent or a natural knack or anything like that for inspiration you don't ideas come easy that's why a random dude like me that spends his time playing a video game can somehow sit in front of a lot of people and talk about ideas because ideas are easy everything is in the execution i actually think that steve jobs came out with a quote something like that about apple at one point maybe someone in chat can uh can point it out you know so you can come up with this cool idea about the tanks going through ore. executing it is really what the criticism should go towards but I, I am an idealist at heart, and I see what it could have been, and it makes me very sad, and angry, and impassioned. Anyway, anyway, I don't want to rant about this. Your chat is visible on stream. You might want to put it down a little more. Oh, 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 behind the, behind the camera. All right, cheers. Uh, trying again. Hello, I'm interested in the tournament that you're going to host on NA. Just be there for the stream, bro. What's my opinion about the people saying Guild Wars 2 has no end game, especially since we have raids? People don't seem to understand the game's changed in more than three years. Well, yeah, that's 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 MMOs though, isn't it? That's, that's markets for you. That's the fact that this is a three-year-old game, and ma mainstream audiences are never going to look at it again, right? Th they're not. That's why Arena. Uh, not unless they have something highly marketable thrown at them, like an expansion. An expansion will only create so many waves, and subsequent expansions will create less big ones. That's why it's scary that Half Thorns never captured people as much as it should have. That's why it's scary that they had to rush Half Thorns because of the community's impatience. Well, no, not 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 because of the community's impatience. Someone once told me that I have a bit of a, a pension for blaming the community instead of the devs. And to be honest, it's the devs for not having a damn clue what they're doing. Like I, I can respect them for trying the whole living world thing and trying to escape the expansion population spike idea, but it damaged the game significantly. And their communication about what they were doing as well damaged the game significantly. Anyway, uh, but yeah, uh, I, people won't look back. It's like, for example, me, all right? I look at, and I try to have an open mind. I look at something like Lord of the Rings Online, okay? Lord of the Rings Online. Wait, what? No, not, not though, Trey. What am I talking about? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, ESO, all right? I look at Elder Scrolls Online, and I remember all the stupid videos that all the YouTubers did when it came out about how bad it was, how laggy it was, what a mess it was, how they were expecting a fully polished final product, blah, 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 blah. And now, you know, you look at posts about that game sometimes leak around. People talk about how everything has changed. You know, it's the same with the Star Wars MMO. Like, they talk about how everything has changed, about how flying's good in it. And, but people don't, people, I, people won't give it a second look. I won't give it a second look. Let's not be so generic. I won't give it a second look. And I'm an Elder Scrolls fan. Because there's just something about it. There's an assumption that the community is either dead in low-level zones or just simply moved too far on and you're going to have too steep of a hill to climb. At least for me, anyway, when it comes to old games, even if they are much better now. All right, this guy, Orophia. There you go. Thank you very much. 
This guy would like to be a spud. Pinku no Yuki. Thank you very much. Alright, there you go. That's our five minutes. See, Kovaco in chat just said, Iso's PvP is known as one of the best in all MMOs right now. That might be true, but I could damn well guarantee you it's not known as one of the best. and It's not going to grow for its PvP. Alright, like really, for, for the Guild Wars 2 PvPers, Guild Wars 2 PvP is as likely to get mainstream esports as you think ESO is, alright? Because it's a game that's not on your radar. And that's how everyone else feels. Alright, 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 we should be good. Alright, let's move. So, uh, we're going to go to the entrance, right? Let's pop the mission. The only thing I really don't like about a lot of the UI at the moment is it lags hard when you, uh, when you have a lot of players around. Alright, challenge, launch mission, go. Entrance is over there. Hopefully we know what we're doing. We all have to like spread out. ESO isn't really like arena style PvP. It's more like what was about. Okay, that's interesting. All right. Well, okay. So get ready, guys. Three, two, one, go. All right. Doesn't that spawn a bunch of? Oh wait, hold on. What? With whom will I enter? The Spud Club. Oh my god, it's an instance now. I haven't done it since it became an instance. What? Are we ready to take on the challenge? Oh, so we can trigger it. We, we, have, we have to trigger this three times in a row, really. Alright, is everybody in? Top pedigree chocobos do race really far. Could will I make a video about the legendary collections and how they work? Unlikely, um, because I, I think the video would be too fluffy unless I really dived into the system, and diving into the system takes insane amounts of gold and time and effort. So I've just got to be careful. Uh, allow anyone to free a captive. Hell yeah, let's do it. Really Alright, let's go. Alright, so we got to escort them, so... I mean, we have 30 minutes. This challenge isn't the worst of them. Don't do it all at the same time, that person says. Is this Quagan underground or above? They're in the water, aren't they? I thought they were in the water. Right, look, I'm going to be a real noob here. Alright. If you ever wanted blind wooden potatoes being a noob, this, this, this is what you get. Yeah, it says an up on the minimap, so I'm guessing it is up there. Let's go back through our fire overload. Let's climb up. Most MMOs don't provide non-combat guild sources outside of the economy. Oh my god, why? Oh, this is me looking at chat. I can't look at chat while climbing the, the crate stuff. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, guys. It can't happen. Alright, let's kill this crate. Good, 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 good. Does Matt play it? What? No, no, no. Matt, 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 Matt is not... You gotta understand, like, you, there's a th MMOs are huge games. I don't think he's actively playing any MMO. I don't think any are really on his radar either. I wouldn't want to talk too much for him, but I'm pretty sure that's the sentiments he's expressed on Visual Wood. It's not that there's never a chance an MMO will ever capture him, but you've. It's just like, especially for making videos on them, more more specifically. Like you know, he played he played uh, FF14, sure, but to make videos on it and stuff, to do reviews, which is you know what he enjoys doing. To review an MMO is outlandish. Oh my god, WP stopped using action camera. I didn't. Actually, I noticed on Reddit, I never clicked it, but I noticed there was a straw poll on who uses action camera, right? What was the results of that? What, what came of that? Because I, I was really tempted to go there and say, yes, I do. Because I feel like it's one of those things that... Because it has a couple of minor limitations, people won't do it. And those who love to hate on crap will be like, Eh, see, look, it's another feature from Hearthstone that didn't do anything in ArenaNet suck. So I kind of wanted to, you know, push the stats a little more to show there are those of us who use it. Because, <laughs> I don't know, over time it feels like more and more and more that people just don't appreciate it. I don't know. Maybe that's just my, uh, my niche little experience of it. One captive rescued so far. About half and half. Oh, that's cool. Yes, I will toggle it on and off. Frequently, I'll toggle it on and off. There's actually a lot of stuff that you want it off. Considering that guild decoration placements, fatal error if you have combat mode on while rotating stuff. Yeah, I, there's, there's stuff I turn off. 
Yeah, that's my nerd voice. Wow, it takes you right to the edge until you're almost kicked, huh? WP, I don't mean to be a bother. I'm sure you will get a lot of messages. Watch your videos for years, and I just want to say thanks. Oh, thank you. I recognize your name, too. We've talked before, haven't we? Dinosaurs? Oh, God. Um... Yeah, there's times. Oh, sorry, no, my voice. Yeah, that's my nerd voice when my voice is going. Alright. Well, that was just a random crate to kill. Those guys, I think, have enough escort. Is there a thing with this where if you bundle up too many people, you will, um, you know scale it up too much and then it's going to be really bad it says that there's one here right does that mean super low down or what was the, the situation i didn't think any of them were this low down it's really weird that they had why would that why did they put these into instances there's one why did they put these into instances again i'm a little unclear all right guys yeah yeah good 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 let's let's congregate here let's get a couple of people to do this one because you can't let any captive die Oh, it was because of the way they set up the queues, right? It's because every single guild in the game is doing this this week, right? Well, unless they have a different preference. Hmm. I want to use action cam, but after 10 years of traditional clicking, it makes me like the old one better. I wish the limitations were removed. Oh, I, you know, action cam is kind of, it's kind of like a drug to me, actually. It's kind of, because I appreciate, I thought, I genuinely believed, and I mentioned this in videos before Heart of Thorns came out, genuinely believed it would improve my gameplay because of, like, like I would be capable of doing more things than I was before because I can so easily kite in, for, in all, uh, max speed in all directions, right? Like, and it feels smooth and it feels great, right? But that's like the high, right? That, this is the high, this is your high, this is your buzz after your first line of coke, right? And that, and then and then the 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 down now the addiction is is the right mouse click having right mouse click down all the time is like a crutch that I now rely on I hate the thought of having to hold down that mouse I like how relaxed my finger always is while playing the game event failed oh no that was was that us oh no which one was it shit all right, let's just go again then, shall we? Let's just go again. Oh, wait, wait. Do we have a cooldown? I think a false cooldown would be good. It gives everyone a second to refresh. Man, we're not very good, Spud Club. No, there is no false cooldown. Let's just go again. We're not very good, Spud Club. It died like three minutes ago. Oh. All right, let's go again. So now I'm in a situation where I sort of know, you know, like my, my gameplay's not as good as it could be. Sometimes like terrain messes stuff up. Sometimes things mess up a little bit. But I'm like, oh, I, I, I need that next hit. I need the next hit. I need, I need this mouse to be constantly held down. I want to not have another Naga break on me. Do not solo the Quaggan. Yeah, guys, I don't know what to say, right? Allow anyone to free, to free a captive. I don't know what to say. We're not, we're not very good. What happened to the first Zero to Hero, the one a week ago or so? It's still going on, it's just that we had a tournament to do and we've had missions, so that's literally... That's why I want to do this mission quickly, so we can get in there and do about an hour of Zero to Hero at least. I have been playing it a little off stream, and that's what I want to talk to you guys about, I want to show it, that's what I want the stream to be. Uh, well, the two in the title just, just means, you know, it's the second time we're, we're streaming it, that's all. I might... The reason I did that is because now I duplicate everything over to YouTube, so if I have the title set up appropriate for YouTube on Twitch already, then it's better. I can automate it better. But I might just have to bite the bullet and have a stream appropriate title while it's on stream and then a YouTube appropriate title later, which I have to type in differently at a later date. I may just have to do that. We'll, we'll, we'll see which it is. Let's see if anyone blah. Oh, never mind. Wow, mouse wheels break because you use mouse wheel up and down for casting. It's crazy. Hey, Liz, I think only you break the Nagas this quickly. No, it's not true, though, dude. It's not true. I know at least three other people who have been through at least two Nagas before. I, the, one of the main guys in my guild that I raid with every week is on, I think, his fourth Naga. And he has another one already bought in his closet. In the expectation, waiting, in anticipation of that thing breaking. 
of his current one breaking. It's definitely not. And here's the thing as well. Before I even bought my first Naga, I knew it was a problem, right? I owned a Naga actually back during GW1. Uh, I bought it. I remember the first time I ever played with it. It was amazing. I, it completely changed my mind, it, uh, like my experience of playing. I, I skilled clicked up until that point. And I remember running around the lake, the icy lake outside of Eye of the North, okay, in GW1. And this is uh, where I first experienced a Razor Naga. And I changed my UI and shrank it all down and stuff. And I made the game as immersive as I possibly could and so on. Um, but even way back then, even way back then when I first got the Naga, when everybody ridiculed the mouse, can I just say as well, people were like, oh, it's a telephone mouse, or blah, 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 blah. It got some serious criticism, right? Some serious criticism. Um, uh, back then, I took a shot on it, but people were saying that mine, that they've started to break. They've started to break. So I want you guys to know that this starts to break. And Razer, as a company, have always had a reputation of making overpriced stuff that deliberately breaks to encourage their consumers to purchase more regardless of warranties. They have a reputation for it. I also hate Razer Synapse. So even though I use Anaga, do not take this as an endorsement of their product. Because it's definitely not one. Right, are we, are we a little bit clustered up maybe here? I'm sure there are people who still have uh, perfectly healthy ones. I have an original generation Xbox 360 that uh, my stepfather uses every... Well, I don't have any more. He has. That he uses like most days to watch DVDs. And that thing has never read Red Ringed of Death. Does that mean that Red Ring of Death wasn't a serious big issue for people? Of course not. Because it was common. It was common enough. It might not, Red Rings of Death may not even have been the majority of Xboxes in their first three years of service. But it doesn't have to be the majority to be a serious problem. We've talked about this on the stream before, actually. That um, uh, Before Heart of Thorns came out, I did a very interesting straw poll with you guys. I did a straw poll where we, we uh, posed the question. If Heart of Thorns releases and doesn't give us a conclusion on the Mordremoth story, i.e. we don't actually get to kill him, will you be satisfied or not? And we kind of put a clause on it. It was like, it was dependent on whether it was like done in a good way to lead into like the, the next Living World season. Anyway, that poll came back 50-50, right? 50-50. So when a poll comes like that comes back 50-50, you guys might all think, oh, that's actually okay. Half the community would have been okay with it. Half wouldn't. You're wrong. That, that would have been a huge mistake for a 50-50 recept uh, you know, uh, reception to that kind of idea. 50-50 on... Oh, hey. Um, hold on. I totally lost my words there. 50-50 on something like that is, is a nightmare. 50% 50, 50 of your community, that 50% are going to be loud, they're going to be vocal, they're going to have a lot of people wanking them off with their upvotes and stuff, being negative douches, and people will pan the entire game. 50-50 is not good. You need the vast majority happy to make it seem like the entire, the, the entire community is happy. I stand by that. And anyway, the, the same sort of logic applies with Red Rings of Death. When people are unhappy, they kick up a much bigger stink than when they're happy, so the ratios need to be much... I don't know how I ranted my way onto that topic, but yeah. Hopefully something about it was interesting. So people are asking for guild invites. Give me a second, guys, because we failed this before, and I'm a little, a little concerned we might fail another one, so I want to pay attention to it. Yeah, the Zephyr said Razor Might is terrible. Mine started double-clicking, and then the scroll click stopped working. Then my right mouse button stopped, walk it, stopped working all within one year. That's basically what happened to mine. Well, one of mine. This is my... Third... Naga. I had a I had a standard original one. Then for Christmas I got a replacement. Actually, I went. I, I wasn't even going to use it anymore. But uh, someone in my family knew I used it and it broke, and I was really sad when it broke. So they bought me a replacement. And when they bought me a replacement, they they spent too much money on it and they got the molten edition. So this is like, hey, give us twenty quid for a different color. Cool. I still I really liked the design of that mouse though. It was a limited edition, like red fiery Naga. Anyway, so I had that. Then the the molten edition one broke. And uh, this was well into Guild Wars 2, and all my binds were based on it and all that. And I was just like, screw it, I'll, I'll just get another one. So then I bought a new one, which is the 2014 edition. So, yeah. There might have been another one in, in between there, you know. There really might have been. 
I think I still have my crappy old dusty. The thing about Nagas, and people will understand this, the newest editions don't do it so much because of the design of the, the buttons. But the old fabric they used to use on it, on the gaps and stuff, if you use that mouse a lot, they'd get all like this horrible like hand gunk in them, alright? Right, we all know it's there. Everyone who uses a Naga, you all know. Admit to the hand gunk. And I used to have to get like this little pin every like two weeks or so and like scrape it out. It's like a combination of dust and like, I don't know, just grime that just builds up. It's horrible stuff. Alright. What next? One more, one more, one more. Let's not let it die. Come on. Yeah, it's like an oily gunk. Yeah, yeah, the hand gunk. Alright. We're all adults here. Yeah, a toothpick or something like that to get out. There you go. I see people know. Yeah, d dead skin and sweat. Mmm. Lovely clean mouth. So my, my, my Razor Naga special edition Molten that happens to be broken and has multiple issues, alright, is, uh, is in my drawer. Also, still probably covered in that kind of grime, which is probably dried out to the point it's just dust now, but still. Yay! Mission complete! Guys, that was awesome. You really pulled through. That's really cool. Thank you very much for uh, assisting a little there. What I'm going to do for a bit of fun, if you still want personal credit on some stuff, World vs. World Catcher, if you've got two friends in this guild who are on the same server, you can go take, get, get some camps in World vs. World and you get rewards. And Stronghold if you want to do a team. I've popped both of those. However, we're going back to Zero to Hero for the stream now. That was really, really, really cool, guys. I need to sort my inventory out badly. We'll do it another day, alright? So, uh, so yeah, we're gonna go onto our other account now, and I'm very excited. You can guys can look at my beautiful face. This is absolutely my favorite potato. That just so outrageously stupid. I couldn't stop laughing when I made this. All right, that's maybe a bit of an exaggeration. I laughed when I made this. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's log into our new accounty. There we go. Uh, just need to remember which account it is because I got a few now actually. I actually have two free to play accounts. Guys, I want to do more stuff with free-to-play accounts. I don't know what, though. What can we do that's like a cool chat? See, what I, I what I am sort of thinking, okay, is, um, you know the, uh, you know, you know the idea of a guild challenge thing? After we do three base lives on the ice for NA, right? We're going to be looking for another minigame. I kind of want to do the one where you have one high-level player against lots of low-level players. But, you know, the, the, the kind of the newbie starty thing to think is, oh, yeah, let's have a level 8 against a bunch of level 1s. But in Guild Wars 2, that just doesn't work. The level 1s can't do any damage. Arena out of all these arbitrary mechanics that just... Whatever. I'm not, I'm not going to complain about them again. But uh, they, they make it impossible. So what you need is like a level 20 player against a bunch of level 11 players or something like that. So we could get... Pe uh, not everyone necessarily has a character slot. So maybe we could be like, all right, everyone make a free-to-play account. We'll throw it in the gear, yeah, but then we've got to guild invite all of them. Ah, it's just so annoying. I don't know what to do. Alright, anyway, so check it out. Zero to hero, zero to hero. Uh, I haven't actually logged in today. we got bag of experience. This is one of the reasons I wanted to do. Because bags of experience equals times of knowledge. So we can get two levels straight away. Which is great. We've got some crafting materials as well. T6. Oh, two T6 blood. That's not bad. We, uh, I collected a couple of dailies in the meantime. Uh, I got, like, some chests of lumber and stuff. And those chests of lumber enabled me to get, um, uh, like, some elderwood logs and stuff. We still have some Christmas presents. I didn't want to farm Winter's Day on the, on the challenge because if I farmed Winter's Day, people would have turned around and be like, Hey, you only got a lot of money because of a festival and I'm not allowed to do the festival. Guys, I can't believe, since we did the YouTube video on this, I cannot believe how many people have turned around and said, Oh, this doesn't work because you know a lot about the game. And I, I, I said it before, and before people even came out with such outlandish comments, I'll say it again, alright? If your argument is that you cannot get quickly to raiding level without actually exerting your brain or learning anything about the game, you literally just want to be able to play base 
you know, stupidity level, run around, not understanding anything, and still get there in, in a quick time, then I've got no words for you. What's the point in me doing a challenge where I just play like a complete moron that doesn't know anything and see how long it takes to get to raid? Well, that's, that's irrelevant to the discussion anyway. This whole point is about people who feel forced to reroll, make new characters, or return since they, begin, they already played at the start of the game and they want to get to raiding potential because that's what they're most interested in the game. They don't have a class, they don't have something better that they can do. All right. The fact that we know about the game, the fact that we're doing things, doesn't mean anything. Any player can learn how to do it quickly. Any player can. And that, that's, that's, that's the real point there. So I really don't think that because we know the game, it makes it a pointless experiment or undermines it. It, it actually gets me kind of angry because, like, people so flippantly discredit all the effort that goes into something like this over something so silly. All right. Uh, finger lights, I've actually seen that WoW stream before. I've seen the videos on it and stuff as well. Yeah, and it's possible in WoW, guess what? Because Wizard, uh, cause, wow, Wizard. Because Blizzard did a, made a real RPG. It's crazy, right? Crazy. Oh, I forgot, I don't actually have home instant stuff. Anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm salty about that. It annoys me. Doesn't it, I, no, the individuals saying it don't annoy me. I guess, you know, maybe I, I should probably be annoyed at myself because I didn't make myself clear enough. People, for some reason, seem to think Zero to Hero is to get to find out, you know, like, the news to players. Let's be really stupid and see how slowly things can be done. Like, what is this? Like, how can you even measure that? Like, really? What, you want me to cater to the tiny audience who are bitching about the fact that they're not raid ready and also refuse to not look up guides on how to get there? Are you serious? Or, or, or not even look up guides, seek to educate themselves, all right? This is an MMO, it's a social game, it's a social experience. Anywhere you look, there's players around you who can give you advice on how to level, how to do things, even remotely efficiently. And the sad thing is as well, I think people who say that, actually, uh, you know, they, they're probably massively overestimating how smart I am with the game. They probably look at me and they're the kind of people that look at me and think, oh, Wim Potatoes is a genius. He knows everything about the game and, you know, they hang on my word and that's a scary thing when people are in that position. Because then I say something weird or, or wrong, right? And then, you know, they get very angry because they seem to think everybody else is hanging off on my word when they're not. WP, you're talking to the GW2 community. Does it get any more casual? There's a lot of people in the GW2 community who aren't casual. I would say, anyway. I don't think the community at large is as casual as we market ourselves as. I actually think the whole discussion is a bit stupid. But it's, uh, like, like, World of Warcraft is a fantastic game for casual people to play, but does that mean that it's only casuals who play it? No. You know, these products are so huge. They appeal to so many different people in so many different ways. Alright, anyway, what are we looking at? We're looking at Ascalon Miner, and I don't think I've bought any new... Alright, we do have 20 picks thingies, so that's fine. Um, again, my plan here, guys, to level quickly is to not get hearts or do personal story. Now, personal story can be good for black line keys. If we got a hero heroic booster, it would have been amazing. A heroic booster probably would have been our ticket out of this much quicker. I, I, I think a heroic booster would have saved us something like... Three or four hours on leveling to AE. If we'd used it perfectly in Harathi Hinterlands or while leveling in, in Blood Tide Coast. But uh, but unfortunately, we didn't get one from the personal story Black Lion Key. So my choice now is to... Um, I don't know, I could gamble. I could trade gold for gems, open a, buy a key, open a chest and hope I get another one. But I don't know whether... I mean, how much does it cost for a single key? I've actually never done this. It might be more efficient, you never know. 125. I'm going to I'm going to try this now and see that it's outrageous. So if I wanted to get gold, no, if I wanted to get gems, 125 gems, I would need what's a quarter of 70? Like 12 gold or something, right? So I don't know. I don't know if it's worth it. It's very unlikely to be worth it. What else have we got? We've got Mystic Forger, we've got Ascon Miner, and we've got Frozen Moor. We also have Wayfarer at Foothills events, so really what we want to do is just mine here and get out of the place as quickly as possible. So I'm actually going to go to Baradin's Crypt. We'll ignore that vista for now. Uh, WP, I'm leveling zero to here on NA as well. I got a heroic boost and I wasn't sure what to do with it. Wouldn't it be best to use it in an event heavy zone? Yeah, what you want to do is you want to use it 
when you use it, you want to make sure you keep that kill streak maxed out the entire time. And then probably you want to do the Hirathi Hinterlands Centaur farm up there. Where if you get just a couple of friends, uh, you can scale the event up like mad and um, tag the poop out of billions of centaurs that just keep spawning and spawning. And the event's on a fairly low cooldown too. And there's probably a super duper efficient way of doing it. I'm just not entirely sure of it just yet. So some people had some interesting ideas as well. Wow, my voice is really good. <clears throat> some people had some interesting ideas as well about our ascended gear. Pointed a couple of things out to me that I hadn't thought of. Um, number one is obviously the elite specialization collections. I think we may want to go to the Heart of Thorns map before we hit 80. We're appropriate to play in those areas from probably about 76. So we can get those last four levels while we're in the jungle, right? Which is a kind of a cool idea straight away. But, uh... There's also some um, collections we can do. So uh, the backpack, right? Back pieces don't give you too many stats. And they're usually not that good um, in terms of price, right? Like they cost a lot of money. I just missed all the mining nodes. This is ridiculous. But uh, if you do like the connoisseur collections or something, there's, there's a couple of collections that can give you backpacks. And I'm not entirely sure. I haven't fully looked into that. But that could be also be very handy to us. Very, very, very useful. So I'm, I'm thinking of looking into that. I guess there's no way really to get down there right now. So we'll just go over here. Ah, another place to roam. The whole raid ready discussion is much more pertinent now as well. I don't know with the well of precognition change to Aegis and the alacrity change. By the way, I'm 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 in I'm in the camp of these are both good changes. I'm pretty sure with both of those though, you can no longer f like five man veil guard or six man gorsable. Pretty sure you won't be able to do that anymore. Um, and the the no chronomancer being able to carry everyone is a significant difference. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. That means that there's more impact on everyone else, obviously, which is what raids should be. It's nice to see, I believe, through these ba through these balance changes for the first time in Guild Wars 2 history. I can't attest to Guild Wars 1 history, but for Guild Wars 2 history, that something actually got harder after its original implementation through these changes. That's actually pretty significant. I've wanted to mention that in a video, but I don't really have too much else to say about the balance, except that that's a cool fact. So there you go, you guys can get it here on the stream. Seriously, everything else has been trivialized by power creep or deliberate nerfs. Everything. There's something else I've noticed a lot of people in the community are doing now as well. And it, it's weirding me out. Whenever the discussion that something's been nerfed to get easier comes up, people are very, very, very quick to toot their own horns and say, Oh no, are you sure it's not just because the community got better at the stuff? No, we're 100% we're, we're positive, alright? Like... Like, with the whole world boss thing, it really, really, really irks me. There's a big, big, big difference between... Even though they doubled the world boss healths, right? There is a big difference between, like, tech these days compared to tech today that can be crit and condied and all this other nonsense, right? Like, there's a... Well, not nonsense. Not nonsense. But th these changes have been huge. Huge! Why am I missing out on the hearts? Just wondering. Well... Some hearts, yes, probably would be worthwhile to do, but I'm not the I'm not like some genius, right? I, so I don't know what every single little heart is good for. I don't know which are the long hearts to do and thus not experience efficient versus the very quick hearts which are experience efficient. Specifically in this zone, I mean, if I run past a heart that I'm like, yeah, this seems pretty easy, I'll probably do it. Like for example, some of the video footage recently has shown me in Queensdale, and in Queensdale you've seen me. Um, Doing like those early hearts, you know, dancing in front of the cows and stuff like that. Stuff's not hard. Uh, but some of them can scale weirdly as well. Not that we're running around with Zerg. That's very deliberate on this stream. Oh, yeah. uh, let's go over here. I, I want to get this Vista at least. Vista, Vistas I don't mind. Vistas I think are pretty good. Map completion is efficient for materials. That's true. But when I want to go for gold, I'll start going for gold. And we'll see what we can do about that. Well, that better not have been the way up. And I just did a weird jump. These vistas are actually kind of annoying in DSM. I mean, it's funny how things start off fun. Like, I love the way that they're hidden in the rock faces and stuff in DSM. On my first few explosions. It's funny how things can quickly turn from fun to frustrating. 
on repeat plays. Something I suppose that MMO designers have to struggle with every day of their lives. How long have I been online? Uh, you can type exclamation mark up time. Yeah, 50, 57 minutes. There you go. 57. Mostly we are looking for mining nodes right now. We just need one more. Just just one more and then and then we'll get, we'll move on to Wayfair and do some magic weapon. I wish Guilders 2 had haste stats in games of haste. Even if it's weaker than flat stats, I always go for haste. For the fun, gotta go fast. I, uh, oh, I, I, I hate myself sometimes. I was thinking the other day of, you know, uh, this wonderful version of Guild Wars 2 where everything I personally want could be in it and I could be in charge of design decisions and stuff. I was thinking about how much this game lost in its loot system, in its feeling of rewards and, uh, and its economy in general, right? Purely because when you press F to loot stuff, it vacuums into your inventory instead of when you press F, say, on this branch, and I have to stop and pick it up. See, now, GW1 and most other games have got... Well, not most other games. A lot of other games have got the system where you have to stop and pick things up. And that simple change would have dramatically... And I mean dramatically affected Girls 2. I know that may sound like a really stupid thing for me to say. You might be like, what are you talking about? It's just standing still. It's just not doing anything. But you have to appreciate the whole running through world versus world, spamming staff one, slamming F on your keyboard no longer works. Neither does that work in any of the high level event chains where there's mass amounts of uh, mobs um, where you're killing them at range. And uh, the experience of opening a chest that just spews crap all over the floor that you actually have to stop and pick up, though it may sa seem like tedium, I actually think it improves the experience of the game, like, by several magnitudes. It also encourages people to start skipping loot. Experienced players who do find it a little more boring do start skipping, you know, what they would consider to be trash items in many respects. You do get the ultra-efficient, you know, nerdy players who... You know, they, they exist in Guild Wars 2, just like any other game, you know, where they'll TP for the perfect price on a sell order, every single little thing they ever get in. You'll get people like that who pick everything up, but you'll also get the majority of people who end up actually skipping. You know, like, if I kill this boar and he drops a single tiny little trophy thing, and what I really want to do is get to that mining node over there, I don't pick it up, right? And that actually does impact the economy over many years and many items and many players playing. It affects a lot, a lot, a lot of things. So anyway, I was just thinking about that the other day, straight away. That's not a new thought that's come to my mind. But the new thought that did come to my mind was the fact that auto loot, pressing F to pick up lots of things in a circle around you, or stats that make you pick things up quicker, all right, w would actually have been things possible within the game, right? They would have been like another ver ver variety of magic find, right? And obviously magic find being built into gear is not something that ArenaNet Arena eventually wanted to do. But magic find is still a mechanic. It is still tied into salvaging. It is still tied into achievements. It does still have some of a place. And you could find a place for that too, right? You know, you could have a utility infusion that is, uh, you know, 50% quicker bend down pickups. Or a different utility of infusion, which is, you know, uh, pick up two items at once. Or, you know, random stuff like that. Like, there, there's just depth that could have been there. And uh, everything I just said is really one of my examples of... Um, why I believe streamlining is such such a de negative thing. You know, it's very, very easy to look at, oh, it's boring to have to kneel down and pick stuff up. Let's just let people spam F and it zooms into their inventory like this, right? It's so easy to look at that and it's so easy for ArenaNet to think, oh yeah, we'll do this. This is the, uh, this is the more accessible, this is the more polished way of doing things. But I think you lose a lot of the game when you just streamline, 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 streamline so much. And I don't think that's... You often won't ever find people appreciating stuff like that. I don't think, anyway. You know, that's why people were so happy in Guild Wars 2 to, to see, you know, uh, with Heart of Thorns, the mastery that just allows you to not even have to press F anymore. You know, you're just diluting the experience of the game. What was that recent patch? They did something again in a recent patch that, again, just diluted it and it just favoured of streamlining more and more and more. What was it? And I just couldn't help but look at it. I was thinking, man, that's, well, that's another little thing that, you know, takes away from the experience of the game, doesn't it? I think it's a really slippery slope. I don't know, but that's just me. Mo 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 you know, most people would turn around and be like, oh, shut up, wooden potatoes, this is stupid. It's stupid to have to bend down. You don't get enough of a benefit. I think you cut off your own nose to spite your face in a lot of times. 
All right, we'll do this event. We're, we're in Wayfarer Foothills now, guys, for events. So that's what we're doing here. I don't know how I ended up here. That was on a serious rant right there. rocks see now that we're level 19 really we don't want to be in early level zones anymore i probably should have been mining uh from the second char map because we would have got more appropriate experience but that's fine uh and we're only in this low level map right now because it's way fair foothills we are we are level 20 we're quarter of the way there you know but yeah so the the zero to hero stuff like uh you've got earrings earrings i'm gonna need to do guild missions for in fact, it probably would have been really smart to do that challenge with you guys with the Spud Club. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to need to do that, that. And I should probably start right now. In fact, I could already have, if I'd played my cards right, this character could already have enough commendations for one earring, couldn't it? Over two weeks of guild missions? I believe that's correct. And then it would just be two more weeks and we'd be done with that part of the Ascended Climb. I suppose there's no insane rush, but we will have to start doing that. Unless there's another way to do it. The other way to do it would be dungeon collections. Which would be running the dungeon every day. So again, incentivization for players to go to dungeons. But oh no, we lost 30 silver at the end of each run. Ooh, or 50 silver at the end of each run. Ooh. Why Ranger for Zero to Hero? Well, that's because that's what Twitch chat voted on. At first, they voted on a daredevil because I kind of bigged it up. Um, but if the whole point of it is, you know, people re-rolling to get a meta spec or something, I'd rather not do daredevil. I, I mean, and I'll be entirely clear, okay? A big part of me wants daredevil. I want daredevil because daredevil can go really fast. And then I can level to 80 quickly. And I can do everything really fast. And then I can exaggerate how easy it is. All right? But let's be honest with ourselves and ignore that part. Uh, I think that the, the, the challenge is better. So I repolled and I said, all right, of these meta specs, what should we do? And Druid was what came out on top. Some people were saying, oh, this is going to be really boring, Druid, you know, just pew, 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 pew. I really don't think many of the Guild of Two classes are that much more boring to play or watch than any of the others. All right, look, we've contributed a crap ton to that. That guy's still there. It's scaled up. I'm just going to let them do that on their own. I should have got that Vista before I waypointed away. Oh well. Took a little mistake, it's fine. We're gonna look for some more events. Yeah, stampeding minotaurs. There's always lots around here. Lots of events, I mean, not minotaurs. Plot twist, January 26th, Thief becomes meta. I mean, Thief already has a place in raids, right? Like, and this was the other really annoying, the difficult thing to do. Because I had to I had to elaborate, illuminate that point I just made to everyone. While also making it very clear that we're not having a discussion about how viable Daredevil is. You know, because the thieves out there would be very, very, very quick to turn around and say, We're viable, we can be played. Like, that's not my point, right? Uh, my point is that in the eyes of the community, in the eyes of pugging, in that world, generally, you are not a favoured class. Yes, I know you can beat the stuff. I've seen a, a no glide Gorsival with Daredevils. I've seen Sabbath kills with Daredevils. I've seen um, Veil Guardian kills with Daredevils. It's just you don't do your team any favor and favors. And if the whole point, right? The point isn't to get ascended, right? Because you don't need ascended. But people feel guilty if they don't have ascended because they don't, they uh, misrepresent the problem. But whatever. So if the point is to do it guilt free, how can you be guilt free if you're on a non meta class? So there's like two different angles that led to the decision to uh, not Daredevil. The, the fact that it's all about being guilt-free here because of other reasons, but also because uh, the most realistic real-world application of this test is people having to re-roll to raid. Alright, preparing ice. Did these guys drop the ice? i got 30 seconds to find out. Nope. Did those guys drop the ice? I'm guessing they do. No, don't you dare pick this up. This is mine. All right, good. <laughs> I didn't know if I'd have to fight over it. <laughs> All right, that's good. That's three events straight away as soon as the other one cashes in. We'll only get bronze on this, but whatever. All right, let's see if the Grawl in the cave are doing anything right now. Is there a cheap way to get ascended gear? Yeah, ascended weapons, I would say, are fairly cheap. What are reclaimed weapons like now, I wonder? 
It's the cost of, as far as I understand, it's the cost of 20 gold-ish, or maybe 30 gold, and uh, two dragon stand runs if you do it really smartly, which is what we'll be aiming to do. I believe that's what it is. So here, this heart, I, I remember, is pretty easy. But it's also a very low-level heart, so I don't actually know how worthwhile it is for us to do this. We were really here for the event. Because what we want are these. These Ritz of Experience boost us up. Uh, have I tried using the Pet Guard Aggressive Keybind? I saw it a few days ago, and it made my Ranger experience a lot more enjoyable than having to spam 3 or click the button manually. Actually, no. Talk to me about that. What, what, what does that Keybind do? Is it... You just pre you just toggle the keybind on on and off of guard each time you get in a fight. Is that it? Wait 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 wait. Oh, ice sculpture. Oh no, that was a follow up event from where I just was stood. Damn. I thought he built the sculpture before the ice, but now that I think about it logically, obviously he doesn't build the <laughs> damn thing before the ice. All right, well, it's a second little mistake right there. It's fine. Again, we're not going completely crazy with this. This isn't a speedrun. Actually, after Zero to Hero is over, I am very keen on trying speedrun stuff. I'm just going to say, I think it'd be so fun. I think it'd be crazy. We'd have to figure out what a rule set is. Can you be assisted by other players and use teleport to friends? Can you have times of knowledge? I think you'd have to have times of knowledge for it to be interesting in any way at all. And considering I have over two stacks of them, I actually could do some fair practice on a speedrun. I was hoping that would ding me. Totally didn't. There we go. Let's see what we get. Eh, that was okay. Yeah, I don't regret doing that. That wasn't bad at all. We didn't seem to get credit for the mine event. I guess that's the new system in which they remove your credit, right? So you don't spam away like I basically just did. Fair enough, are not it? Oh no, there you go. Gather dredge ore from the mine. Sweet. Okay, so we only need one more event now. Let's go up here and see if there's anything. I do like this map. This is a cool map. Some thugs are blocking the road. Someone get rid of them. Oh, okay. I'll get rid of the road. Block, sure. You wanna just throw an event at me? I like how was that a human, by the way? If that was a human, that's really cool. He just calls them thugs. He doesn't quite recognise the sons of Savannah. What are the reclaimed weapons? Reclaimed weapons are rare things that you can farm every day from um, going to all the airship caches around the Maguma jungle. Uh, people are very quick to dismiss the money-making techniques that are in the in the jungle, but um, they're worth. They're, they're, according to the prices I just saw a second ago, which aren't very different to what they used to be, uh, you could still earn a mint off of those. Uh, so yeah, you get strong boxes around the jungle, and then they can come out of those. And I think there's a couple of other places you can get them too. Um, Alright, so now that we're done with that, we want Mystic Forger. Let's go to LA. Alright, so yeah, I, I went to LA. Uh, it might have appeared in video footage. I went through Queensdale, and I can't remember what exactly I did it for, but yeah. Anyway, um, and then you can, if you salvage them, you get these metal plates, and you need the metal plates in crafting the gear. Let's see what we've got here. Oh yeah, I got a mighty amulet as well. Uh, I can't remember where it was from, but I was going to equip it on stream with you guys. So there you go. Wee! The first amulet. Alright, that's daily done. That's 10 AP. That's some spirit shards. I'm not actually sure whether I care about that currency, even on this challenge. I certainly don't care about it on my main account, but fine. Three more of those. That's another level. That's an iron ring. There's some karma, which I do think I care about. There's another idea of a challenge, which is get a legendary weapon on a free-to-play account. Free-to-play legendary. Which is also kind of exciting to me, but uh, I don't know whether... We'll, we'll see about that. Uh, Alright, so we are now level 20. We could do more story. That did basically perfectly pass the 20. The climb from 10 to 20 was really easy there. I think we're now in the bad space, but... hmm. What I'm going to do is just explore a bit more of the mountains. Just going to uh, run through here, maybe run as far as Gendaran Fields.
Uh, farming nodes and farming the caches in each map is a very good way to make some time spent gold. Yeah, I, 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 I've been interested in the uh, cash thing. Like, this is what we've got to start thinking about, guys. When we hit 80, right? Yes, 80 is, is a bit of a challenge at the moment, sure. But what do we do? What do we do after? After we hit 80, how do we start getting our income rolling? I think uh, cheeky little SEP1 and ACP1. Two and three each day is pretty good for gold. Really doesn't take much time. But maybe there's something more directed. Maybe there's, uh, you know, map bonuses we could do. I know that South Sun Cove had some fantastic bonus rewards. That just flooded you with, uh, you know, charged lodestones and stuff. I suppose that's what ArenaNet want players to look at. The map bonus system. That's what they think that new players are going to get funneled into doing for their money. Keeping them in the open world instead of keeping them in dungeons doing mindless repetitive shite. Wait, what? You can't hear me. I know you can. They fixed the South Sun Cove rewards. No, 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 I know that they fixed the farm where you would... It was the new, like, black line key farm. I know they fixed that. But they didn't fix the map rewards. So they didn't change... Because that wasn't really broken. That was just incentive. That was designed incentive for people to go to South Sun Cove. There was no, like, weird event failing or infinite loop events and stuff like that going on, I don't believe. Christ, this music's so loud. Why? Look, the, the sound designers there have made some great sounds and done very well, but their actual mechanical implementation of it in the game is so annoying. I make about 20G a day with fractals. Yeah, but here's the thing. Fractals... Fractals is kind of a completely different cha challenge, right? That's zero to fractal hero. Fractal hero is much harder than raid hero. Just to be clear here, let's not butter it up. Fractal hero would take a long time. You could probably only earn that amount of money, Jesus, because you, you're a high scale, right? And I can't just na randomly be a high scale. Where's the champion, Goliath? Okay. I mean, I do so little damage. It's nice to see some random players here. Pew, pew, pew. I was getting ready for my lightning reflexes there. Let's break the break bar. Go. Boom. Yeah, the Karka are brutal. Oh, I don't blame you for hitting them. The Karka are some scary stuff. See, the thing is, most of my money making has usually been like... <clears throat> through non-repeatable methods. So, investing wisely in Halloween stuff, I've talked to you guys a lot about. Uh, one thing that I've not talked to you a lot about, actually, where I got a lot of money, which went towards one of my legendaries, I don't know which anymore. Oh, and a corrupted Kodan, hell yeah, I'll, I'll keep fighting. Oh no, don't kill it already, no! No. Must get around and all the way to the north. We needed to take the other path. I think we're screwed, let's finish the heart, shall we? Uh, another way was, I was a big PvPer during the old days where the locker used to exist and all this other stuff that um, basically meant that you were, you had no reward in PvP. And ArenaNet very fairly compensated us players who played like that when they swapped the systems together, when they merged them together. Um, specifically, there was a Winter's Day where to get us to get rid of our glory, a currency that no longer exists in the game, they added a winter's. They added a, a few vendors, but one of them they added was a winter's day vendor, who sold you giant gifts. And much like this year, where giant gifts have some value, they certainly had value back then too. And um, you, PVPers, people who had tons of glory that they'd never spent over their years of playing the game, absolutely rolled in it. This was the second winter's day that this happened, and we got a ridiculous amount of money, a ridiculous amount of money, hundreds and hundreds of gold. Just from selling those ba those gifts, and I I sold them during the event when the when the price spiked spiked to the lowest, and I profited uh, a pretty little amount out of it. I could I couldn't even imagine how much you would have profited if you'd been patient and waited with those. Where did you guys come from anyway? Lobby's home was in Frostgorge South, but it was destroyed by bad ice 
No, don't kill them before we can all tag them. Do you know what we should try doing? We should try tagging something and then just applying loads of boons to it after the 26. And see if we get max credit. See, and the whole gold, silver, bronze system I still don't like. I mean, silver may as well just not exist. Basically, what the good system right now is, hey, you did the bare minimum, good job, or you barely tagged it at the end. So there you go. Here's, here's, some, here's a reward for you. We're going to give everyone the reward. And then they've got gold, which means, hey, you spent like five seconds here. Cool. You uh, you had the most slight modicum. And then there's silver, the rare, elusive silver. It's like, oh, I hit it bizarrely in that crazy middle spot. Or I spent the entire time at the event... But it happens to be a weird event that's scaled far too high, and I only get silver for it. Like, it's it's not a system. It should be no reward, or bronze, and then very, very rarely, silver appears, and ultra rare, gold. And both silver and gold are very rewarding. That's how I'd prefer, anyway. How you po po portion that out and figure that out is you know, a whole different discussion. Which is actually the hard part, so I'm not going to talk about it. Axe Torch Ranger leveling is the shit. Actually, yes, I'll tell you what. My original Ranger, um, I did a lot of leveling. My original Ranger, I basically did a challenge on as well. The uh, original Ranger was basically the start of the permadeath stuff you saw on the stream. Except it happened a year before the stream even existed. Um, there were a couple of YouTube videos that went up about it. And, uh, yeah, that was when I first started playing without the minimap and tried different things. I did a video called Starting Over. If you type uh, Guild Wars 2 or Wooden Potatoes Starting Over, you'll, you'll get the information about it. It's kind of cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, Condi was pretty fun on that. I do like Condi. I, that's basically all I play in PvP now on my Ranger. If I ever get a Ranger daily. See, here's the other thing. Should we go for PvP rewards, PvP potions? Because you can get ascended stuff out of that. Over my time on my main account, I've been okay with, with that. So, like, getting every day's PvP potions. But that doesn't really give you experience. But it does give you times of knowledge. So, I wonder if while leveling, it is worth getting the PvP potions. You know, from hot joins. Maybe only if it's Ranger Daily. What is it? Ranger Daily is today. See, I do wonder about that. What do you guys think? You just go into a hot join. You take a free win. And, and, you know, you might get th as many as three of your dailies. That's six PvP potions. That's fair progress on one of these tracks. How quickly do you get a level up time? I actually don't know how quickly you get one. Because it, it comes between these, doesn't it? And there's no way to probably see. Is there any way, is there any uh, really significant rewards you can get from some of those tracks? And I mean the default tracks, like, that would help with ascended stuff. Can we unfog this? No. Okay. Who are you, by the way? I don't actually recognize this guy. Ah, Snowden Drifts, a land teeming with resources and test subjects to be exploited for the greater good. Such a wonderful place. What do you mean by test subjects? The wildlife in these mountains has a particular essence which can be extracted and used to create more cohesive for my capacity. A more cohesive bond for my capacitor. But how do you obtain this essence without hurting the animal? Without doing what? Oh, I didn't realize you were one of those tree ant huggers. Oh, okay. All right, he's a douchebag. Yeah, the FOV was very locked back then. We used to have to resort to third-party tools to fix our FOV. And then we could do all the exploits in World vs. World. Actually, you just go windowed and stretch it. <laughs> and then you were done. No, we've got a house over there. I mean, he's not even using food. GWC is an easy game. You can get it for two copper. That's true. I should be having food at this point. I told myself I didn't want to quickly rush to the Halloween food, the uh, candy cane custard and stuff. Um, but yeah. No, we've leveled perfectly fast, I would say, so far. This character is now... Four hours old, and is level 20. It's not bad. Four hours to level 20, that would be, you know, uh, 16 hours to 80, I suppose. Face of a day for 80. 
Oh god, wait, 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 wait. Uh, speak your riddle. Wit. Drinky drink. I wouldn't rely on getting an ascended price drop from PvP since this is very rare. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think that was a crazy idea. But what about the reward tracks? What about, like, at the end of a reward track getting, you know, um... Like, I don't know, like, charged loads or... Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We need to de decide on a stat set as well, guys. Come, this, this is a project. What, what stat set are we going for? Magis? Clerics? I'm not going Zealots. I can tell you straight away. I know it's on the list, but I'm not going to do it. Or we could go Zerks. We could be a Zerk Druid. But again, I don't actually really like that too much. So I think it should be either Magis or Clerics. Actually, I think it should just be Magis. I think actually... It's not too much of a decision to make there. I think it should be Magi's because clerics can still tank aggro. Tank aggro. I think the most raid friendly druid you can be would be Magi's. You know, for for most widespread acceptance in pugs. The least chance you're going to upset people, you know, by stealing aggro on your clerics guy. The least chance it would be Magi's. Yeah, and it would be a, it would be a split for what it's worth as well. Yeah, it would be uh, clerics trinkets. There are two Magi's trinkets, but... And those come from dungeons. So one of them is um, Honor of the Waves, I think. This is a very cool cave. This is one of the prettiest places that I rarely come to. And the Raven Shaman's already dead. During the finishes track, doing the finishes tracks and zone tracks, do the Arara track and the Glorious for free exotic armor. Doing it six times will give you a full set of stats select exotic armor. Yeah, six times quite a lot. Is PvP really the answer? What is the fastest PvP farm? Is it still in hot joins? Or is it better? I mean, I could probably climb some divi divisions as well. Honestly, I can't have the help of any other character, so I'd have to learn to be a good ranger. <laughs> Um, but I could probably get some of those division rewards, which is a fair amount of gold, right? Like, quite a lot of gold. Hey, I'm starting to like this a bit more. 5G, unidentified die, shards of glory that you can sell for even more. Plus all the stuff on each division tier up. I reckon I could finish Amber very quickly, at least. And finishing Amber is, uh, worth, uh, quite a lot. Amber is, what, 15 games? That's it? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> 15 games I may have to play anyway to get some tracks. So should we do a track as well that gives us a key? A black line key? I like it. Look. A black line key. And then maybe we can get that hero booster to finish off our leveling. Oh, I don't know, guys. You need to be ranked 20 before playing ranked. Ah. I forgot about that. Yeah, that's that's a bit of a problem. As we are currently zero. We're still on the zero part of zero to hero, guys. <laughs> Let's keep getting our skills at least. There you go, that's all the traps. Spam them up indiscriminately because Arena they give you so many. Ah, oh, see that again, like it's, there's certain things just really make me sad. You just ate a hell of a lot of potatoes. Congratulations, man. That is that is that is the life right there. That's what you want to be living. That's how it goes. Is the boy uglier than the potato? Am I the boy? Am I uglier than that potato that you see right there? I think that the potato you see right there has an aesthetic quality I personally do not exude. So perhaps. Perhaps if you like clean felt drawings on foodstuffs, to look at me may not give you as much pleasure. Two days gone by, still a zero. We're not quite a zero. We're level 20, bro. All right. Level 20 was impressive back on the first day that Guild Wars 2 came out. All right. To see a level 20 instantly was like, what? Are you seriously? How the hell? You need to stop rushing, mate, and play the game slowly. Right? You'd criticize them. Now all that matters is rushing to end game. All right, let's be entirely clear here. I really don't know how efficient what I'm doing is. I really don't. 
I think if I had more damage, if I was higher leveled and I had food and kill streaks and stuff, and I was tagging stuff as I went for all the bonus experience, it would be way more efficient. In fact, I, I pretty much know it would be. Doing this while getting the bonus XP, but for that I need a kill streak booster. And I don't think I can get one. Don't think it's possible. Oh, actually, hold on. Do is it leveling up or is it personal story rewards? Because you can get other boosters actually, and then you can use boosting charm and powder on them, and you can convert them. Hmm. I wouldn't say the RNG gods are on my side. Uh, you know, like over six, what is it, seven thousand maybe? PVP matches. I've had maybe about twenty ascended drops, twenty to thirty. Uh, m most of those being rings, I'll just say. Maybe six armor or something, which is great, like, to me. In retrospect, I think that's awesome. But I don't think it's because I've been a particular outlier on the RNG. I just think it's what happens when you play it quite a lot. This is interesting. The frozen sweeps. And they're shooting those archers. See, this just seems so weird. It's like, why is this here? Like, really? So, oh, we don't know what to put in this area of the map. Uh, don't we have that thing in Harathi? Yeah, 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 let's, let's do it. Go, 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 go. Yeah, all right, all right, let's go. Sorry about the spam under the map. I could be using the uh, content director. That's not chin, it's neckbeard. Uh, yeah, I think it is neckbeard, actually. I think they're little wisps of neckbeard. Uh, anyone know about Dostoev Skypeak? Dostoev is also a uh, a character in the game, a dredge. Uh, all the dredge are based off of Russian culture and stuff. And uh, yeah, there's there's a dredge with that name too. Is the potato cam live? Yeah, that's absolutely live. People ask that pretty much every stream and every time I tell them, yes, it's live. So I'm going to shake the camera a little in a second, all right, just to demonstrate that this is indeed right now. Ready? There, see. Did you, see this, did you see the camera shake a little bit? Alright. Yeah, and as fascinating as the running around maps thing is to level, we obviously... Uh, I kind of... I, I want to do this till I get to roughly level 40-ish. Then we'll try Harathi, and then we'll try Blood Tide. And if we can get a kill streak booster while we're at it, perfect. I wonder if we do skip... If we skip, if we skip cutscenes the whole way, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Maybe personal story is okay for experience. Ah, a fresh horizon. We don't need all the answers. So with my numbers, it would be 350 games, one ascended piece. I used my third hand for it. Alright, uh, just to be clear as well, guys, uh, the stream will come to a close pretty soon. I'm going to get this thing in the uh, tunnel here. And we're pretty much done. Um, it's very late in the day, and I've got a lot of other work I need to do, um, as always. So, as cool as it is hanging out with you few, we've got to get some X2 edited. Uh, I'm actually, uh, I've recorded loads of X2, but I've not edited any of it, and none of the videos are prepared yet. So, I've, I've basically only done a third of the work necessary for all the X2 stuff. And uh, the next video is due out in about 10 hours, so I need to edit that. And I've got to prepare today's Guild Wars 2 video as well, so... And I've got all the Concrete Duck stuff to edit. Quite the balance, indeed. Uh, and yeah, I, th I think that's okay, to be honest. I think I'm okay with, with, with this. I think we did alright. Yeah, and uh, the next batch of X2 will appear on Patreon over the next, like, two to three days. They'll just keep getting uploaded as I render them out. I know, they'll go up in bulk again. And it will take you all the way up to, like, episode... I don't know. 40 or something, 41 maybe. <clears throat> there's basically two hours of more side stuff, and then there's two hours of like intense, awesome story stuff. Why did you shoot Gipple and me? Ah. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Alright, and now we're a little underleveled. So, uh, so yeah, alright, well, uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Thanks for the challenge. It's a good thing that we managed to get that. I'll keep an eye in a couple of hours as well on the Ethereum uh, and make sure we spend that on some more stuff for the market, which means more decoration stuff, which means more potential stuff there. 
Uh, and, uh, and yeah, that's about it. So thanks for tuning in to Potatoes for Dinner today. Hope you had a great dinner, guys. And I'll see you next time. Don't forget, if you are in North America next Friday, you could be uh, winning a precursor. The fourth of ours to give out. Pretty incredible. Cheers, guys. Catch you next time.